Welcome back. So we are starting to explore health claims. So, so many food product developers are imposed on by uh, marketing and their R&D teams to meet different nutrient content or health claims that could be put onto the label. And I will have some content specifically walking through the guidance for making nutrient content or structure function claims for food products. But what I wanted to do today is just uh, explore how ESHA interprets nutrient content claims and how um, using ESHA can help you as part of your iterative process figure out, can I make a claim on this food product or not? And how do I go through that sort of process? So at the end of this video, you'll be able to explore the nutrient content claims capabilities in ESHA. So um, if you haven't jumped into some of the earlier ESHA content, do take the time to make sure that you have visited that. We are working with ESHA in Splashtop at Niagara College. So um, there are some unique intricacies for doing that, but I'm going to jump out to my Splashtop window here. And I preloaded some stuff in here that we can work on. So earlier uh, we had a carrot and kale coleslaw, which sounded quite delicious. Well, you've likely been exploring and doing some different view and edit label and different uh, ingredient statements. We've got our label here and we did some editing of the components in that label and we pulled out our allergen statement. You saw all these wonderful tabs up here. Well, there's a few other functions that you may be wanting to get into. And in the edit label, you can go in and manage different things like change your serving size. And so you can, um, you can manipulate, do you want to hide the serving size? Do you want to put in servings per container? Um, so in the case of this, I may say I have two, two servings per container, or I can hide the servings per container. There's some different editing that you can do in there. What I should be doing is jumping out and figuring out what is the reference serving size on a salad. So if I, uh, just a quick reminder, let me go back to the heading on here. This is the table of reference amounts for food. If I type on salad, salads such as egg, fish, shellfish, bean, vegetable, etc., cetera, is, uh, reference serving size is going to be 100 grams. And so I could, within my ESHA, define that serving size as per 100 grams. So let's go into set serving size and a recipe serving size is 100 grams. Click on OK. And if I go back to my edit and my serving size, I do not want to hide the calculated serving size now it should come out as per 100 grams. I should be putting that into a household measure or perhaps I'm packaging my package into, um, let's say 400 gram package, then it would be per one, uh, one quarter of the package. Now, if I jump into this claims button, this is fun. And this is going to give us what are called nutrient content claims. And I'm sure you have seen these nutrient content claims before. It's, it's like, a, it's, it's a good source of iron sort of statement. And I and I will have a second video where we talk about what does each uh, what do each of those claims mean and what is the regulated way of framing it, but uh, a warning box comes up and says nutrient content claims should be based on the food reference amount and we were just on that web page. This is the food reference amount table of reference amount for food. So, we have adjusted that reference amount to 100 grams. You do need to do that manual adjustment. So I'm going to use existing because we've already done it. And now, boom, this is fun. It goes through and it has gone into the regulations and, and cross-referenced every potential nutrient content claim that is possible. Now, what's, what's possible doesn't mean it's logical. And so just because it's there doesn't mean that you should put it on your package. You'll notice there's dozens of them here. You could say it is 
rich in manganese, but for most consumers, they have no idea what manganese does for them, and that may just clutter up the label. But in the case of our carrot salad, we can go in and expand out on these. We, we can go into some of the more minor claims that are out there. What, what's really weird and wacky and wonderful about Health Canada is that they define what are the claims that you can actually make. So anything that has one of these round circles with a, uh, a bar across it, obviously it does not qualify. But anything that has a green check mark, it qualifies. So we could make a claim on our label that says contains calories. Fantastic. Or we could use any of these very specific wordings that says it's a source of energy or contains energy or provides energy or is a source of calories or provides calories. Fantastic. Not the most exciting. And what's great about ESHA is it goes through and it gives you your qualifying condition for the nutrient content claim. So in this case, the qualifying condition is that it has to provide at least 100 calories per reference amount of the serving stated size. And it also gives you the food and drugs regulation cross-reference. So in this case, B01513 item five. And so we could go out and cross-reference. Why don't we just for fun? B01513 item five. B0, so food and drugs regulation Canada. And so I can pull up the full text and when I'm in here, it's going to be quite the download size. Boom. You see how big it is. It's six megs. If I want to pull out the PDF copy, what's really great is I can double check and see that it is the most up to date version. So regulations are current to January 28th with the last amendment occurring on September 20, uh, September 28, 2020. And I can do that cross-reference. So if I click on Control F and, oh, I can't remember the number now. That was B01513, item five. B01513, item five. So Control F, B01513, item five. No, I didn't want to make sure that I'm actually at the cross-reference. Obviously, this one's very popular. I'm getting closer. There we go. So here we're starting to build out what those claims are so that it was B01513 and it was item five. So we're at item one. Now we are starting to get into those tables of what is possible. The nice thing is ESHA is going to help you interpret what are those claims that are eligible. So in this case, item five, source of energy, the food provides at least 100 calories or 420 kilojoules per reference amount and serving of stated size. And here are the only worded claims that you are allowed to use. Source of energy, contains energy, provides energy, source of calories, contains calories, or provides calories. The wonderful thing about ESHA is it cross-references for you. You should always double check to make sure if you are going to use that claim that you have cross-referenced it and the regulation has not changed. What other claims can we have here? Oh, we can have, so I'm gonna jump out here and expand out. I could put in, it's extra lean. That's kind of awkward language, but in theory, I could. Oh, sometimes there is this wonderful and wacky question mark to say no added fat. Now, I added salad dressing, and that would be considered an added fat. But if I only had seeds in there, those naturally occurring seeds would be considered just naturally occurring as compared to added fats and oils. I can go through all of these wonderful claims and think about what are logical ones related to the type of product that I have and are these claims relevant to my stakeholders. We talked before about the sorts of health claims that um, different food products are capitalizing on and the different trends that different food products are capitalizing on. 
just because you can say it doesn't mean it makes sense to say it. Here's another one. So it's a source of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Yeah, because we've got lots of hemp seeds in there. And here's what we can say. It contains or it's a source of. And let's see what those qualifying conditions are. Oh, it contains 0.3 grams or more of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids per reference amount of the serving of stated size or 0.3 grams or more of omega-3 fatty acids per 100 grams if the food is a prepackaged meal. So these are the sorts of uh, things that, and, and that goes back to that table. Item 25, let's just jump out there to see item 25. Item 23, item 24, item 25, there we go. Let me just blow this up for those of you who are, ah, it doesn't want to blow up. Oh no, it's still blowing up. Come on, page. Ah! Now I've lost it. Oh, was that item 25? Yes. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Source of omega 3 fatty acids. The source. Food contains 0.3 grams or more. Let's just jump back to our splash top here. So again, I'm in the food and drugs regulation. These are 1513. Uh, and in the tables, this is where it's declaring what those claims can be. Let's jump back to splash top here and it's validated. Indeed, we are meeting what's there. I'm just going to jump backwards here, cancel and jump into my reports to just, I want to, I want to see in my spreadsheet report. Where is it in there? So we've got fat and we've got, got a lot of different tabs open here right now. There we go. If I scroll along sideways here using the scrolling on the bottom, I want to see where my, where, which ingredients contributing all of that wonderful omega-3 fatty acid. So, if I scroll sideways, now I can pull up my omega-3 fatty acid. And you remember the declaration was it has to have a minimum of 0.3 grams per serving. And we are exceeding that quite generously. And in particular, it's the hemp seeds that are contributing that. Now, let's say marketing comes to you and says, hey, you know what? We want to have an omega-3 claim on our coleslaw. Fantastic. But meanwhile, you've done that formulation spreadsheet and you realize that hemp seeds are one of the more expensive ingredients in your product. You can tweak the amount of hemp seeds up and down in your recipe. If we go back to that recipe, we can tweak that hemp seed up and down. Right now we've got 25 grams in there. You can go back in there and say, you know what? That contributed 0.8 grams. We don't need that much. Maybe we only need 12 grams of hemp seed. Okay, now let's go back to the spreadsheet view. Spreadsheet view, and I'm gonna scroll down here because it was all the way on the other side. Omega-3, we are still well within that claim, and we've just reduced the cost on that hemp seed component quite considerably. We are still eligible for that claim. This is the sort of power that Esha can bring you as you are doing uh, more and more analysis to be able to both do cost efficiencies on your product, validate do I need to increase a certain ingredient to be able to get a claim, or decrease an ingredient to be able to manage costs. This is the fun of Esha. Let's just do one more um, example here. We've got Amy's Pizza. We did this one before, and... Let's jump back to recipe and we click on the claims button. And what was a reference serving size of pizza? I don't dare use the existing. Let's click back on set. And you know what? I'm going to click on cancel. You can, you can do it in, in here and we can click on set and we can say the reference amount, enable reference amount, and it's the quantity on pizza Let's just jump back here. Reference amounts for food, pizza, not pizza crust, not pizza crust square. We want pizza, pizza. 
and the reference amount is 200 grams. We can do it this way, but we haven't modified the label in this way. And so you have to be careful because my label right now for my pizza is actually at 238 grams, approximately half of the pizza. As you remember, we need to think about what is that reference serving amount and make sure that the reference serving amount is relative to a natural occurring quantity in that product. So half the pizza is 238 grams. We should, in this case, set our serving size at recipe makes serving weighs 237.5 grams. Okay. Now we go to the claims. We click on that claims button. And what claims can we make? It contains potassium. Mm. It's a source of potassium. We could cross-reference any of those other cross-references. Contains vitamin C. In the case of pizza, is it the sort of thing where we want to be out there making all sorts of claims? Not necessarily. Not all products deserve to have a claim on them. And in the case of pizza, it just may not make sense. We could be saying an excellent source of calcium um, and it would meet the qualification uh, requirements for these sorts of claims. However, in the case of pizza, it may not be the right demographic or the right marketing strategy to worry about making that claim for pizza. You have to think logically. Is it the right product to be making claims? Because I guarantee you, you want to make a source of calcium on things like ice cream? You could, but it's not the right target. So just because you can claim it doesn't mean you should claim everything. Some of these things like, again, it's a source of selenium. Does it make sense to make that claim? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily for this category of product. All right, so... I just wanted to explore that claims button with you and have a little bit of fun with it. Now, there are a few other buttons here and I and and oftentimes the students will say, "Hey, can I make a barcode out of this product?" and and honestly, I, I want to discourage you from making a barcode in Esha and actually go to GS1. I have a different video about using GS1 for getting barcodes. Um, just because you can make a barcode in Esha doesn't mean you should make a barcode in Esha. Some of the functions in Esha are really quite wonderful. And the ability to do health claims and labeling is great. Um, in the case of labeling, I do highly recommend using a different platform for getting your, your label in place. Um, another tab that's useful is this default layout. Um, you may have seen different packages. Maybe you've had a granola bar or a package of candy where the package is really quite, it's quite uh, different from the standard uh, the standard layout, you can go in and change your layout. And so you can uh, switch around and make it into a sideways layout or um, let's see, ob is it object properties, format option? I'm trying to remember how to do it. Again, I can't stress this enough. Let me click on cancel here. Oh, the e-learning center is such a good resource. I highly recommend digging into it and having some fun with it because you will find different functions that you can do to be able to make more, uh, more uh, functions for Esha. Normally before I uh, edit one of these videos, I go through and I make sure that I've used all the functions myself so that I can explain it properly because I do this uh, once a year uh, for the students and doing something once a year doesn't make you a master at it. So do ask questions. And if I don't know the answer to your question, I do definitely know how to connect with the folks at ESHA. Uh, those of you who are Niagara College students, we have been paying ESHA for the licenses and they do have a support center. And if you have a wonderful and obscure question, we can connect with them to be able to get an answer for you. All right. That's one more video ticked off from my box of videos that I need to make. And I've got some more videos coming up on what are health claims in Canada. We talked about nutrient content claims and that it's a source of this nutrient or a source of that nutrient. ESHA doesn't do some of the other types of claims. And I want to dig into what those claims are in Canada and how you might be applying them to the food products that you are designing. All right. Take care and we will talk to you again real soon.